Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life into me. You have been so, so kind to me. Know the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. And I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending. Reckless love of God mm -hmm. When I was your foe Still your love fought for me Yes you did you have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. Yes, you did. You have been so, so kind to me. love of God Oh, it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the 99 and I couldn't earn it and I don't deserve it still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming never Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down That you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me oh, no. there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me
of God It overwhelms me Your love God It overwhelms me Again and again and again Your love God It overwhelms me There's nothing I can do to make you love me any less than you already do. There's nothing I can do that makes you love me any less than you already do. And there's nothing more that I can do to make you love me more than you already do. No shadow. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me, oh no There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me You won't give up on me You won't give up on me You won't give up on me no, 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 you won't give up on me, you won't give up on me, you won't give up on me, no, 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 you won't give up on me, you won't give up on me, you won't give up on me, no, 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 you won't give up on me, you won't give up on me, no, you won't give up on me. Give up on us, you won't give up on us, you won't give up on us, no, 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 you won't give up on us, you won't give up on us, you won't give up on us, no, no, no. Hallelujah. You know, for, for a male, sometimes it's hard to have intimacy with God because it's not necessarily considered macho. Maybe your dad didn't, we didn't share feelings. We didn't share anything. We just worked hard, which is great. They did great. But when it comes to God, as soon as I got saved, it became a lot easier just to become intimate with him. And I, I find that the more I spend with intimacy with God, the easier it is to be intimate with other people. Mm. 
and to be transparent and to just share things. And if they judge me, they judge me. It's okay. I just have to do my job. And that's just to just focus on the Lord and let everything just happen. I keep falling in love, falling in love with you. I keep falling in love, falling in love with you, Lord. I keep falling in love, falling in love with you. I keep falling in love, falling in love with you. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We want to lift your name higher, Lord. Higher and higher. We lift you higher. Higher. And higher. Higher. And higher. Higher. And higher. We lift you higher. Higher. And higher. Higher. And higher. Higher. And higher. We lift you higher. Higher. And higher. Higher. And higher. More. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We give you the highest praise. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. higher higher 
and higher, higher and higher, higher and higher. We lift you higher, higher and higher, higher and higher, higher. We lift you higher, higher. And Lord. everybody welcome to the shield his love is all that we need when we have his love it makes a world of a difference when we have his love we can give as he's told us to give and that's what I'm up here for to take up tithes and offerings the gap there will be someone on both sides for that and the elderly outreach thank y'all for your dollar and your dime this monthly outreach is for the local elderly and great awesome people. So give, give, and give. We thank you. Our mission is for our community outreach, which is the GAP. Welcome online viewers. We're glad you're tuning in. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. When we tithe, it's all about pleasing the Father. I have an acronym for the word Mother's Day. Mother's Day. M is for Master. He is our Lord and Savior. O is for Omnipotent, Almighty and Powerful. Trust is for the T. Reliance on the integrity, strength, and ability, and the surety of God. Surety. S-U-R-E-T-Y. Sorry about that. H is for Healer. He which cures and restores us all. E is for everlasting, lasting forever, eternal God. R is for rejoice, be glad, take delight in him. S is for Savior, Jesus is our Lord and Savior. D is for deliver, he sets us all free. A is for Alpha, he is the first and the beginning. Y is for Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh. Thank y'all for listening to Happy Mother's Day. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for your presence because in your presence there's fullness of joy. I just thank you, Lord, for being our father and our mother, being everything we need, Father God. You said you will be that if we ask. And we ask it right now, Father God, as you just give us a heart of rejoice, rejoicing, Father God, no matter what's going on in our life, no matter how it looks, how it may feel, but we know that you love us, Father God, and you have a purpose and a plan for our life to win. And we thank you for all you have done and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' mighty name, we love you. Amen. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Becoming Your Mom support group. Uh, we have some visitors with us today. Welcome to you. My name is Mark, and I'm the group leader. And I think we'll start by reciting our mission statement. We love our moms, but we are not our moms. We love our moms, but we are not our moms. Carol, would you mind starting us off this week? Hi, everyone. I'm Carol. Hi, Carol. I am the oldest of three roommates, and I'm turning into my mom. I clean up everything after them. I've even started doing their laundry. I talk to myself in the grocery store. 
all the time. All of my status updates are just pictures of kids. I don't even have kids. Same. Well, kids and recipes. The other day, I almost licked my finger and wiped the face of a total stranger. I keep saying words like garbage and tarje. What is that? I'll send a text to someone just to let them know I sent them an email. Well, how else would they know? Right? I mean, these shoes were on sale. What am I supposed to do? Not buy them? I call my husband my son's name. And sometimes I call my son the dog's name. I always tell people, I'll be like two minutes. Then it'll be like an hour. <laughs> whoa, whoa, take it easy there. Shannon already has a tissue. We really don't need to offer her one. I do. Did you see how they let the momness overtake them? So you may not be able to avoid becoming your mom, but the key is to let the beautiful things about moms shine through in your life. The kindness, the caring, the compassion, the qualities that God gave moms when he created them. Oh, like when I text my friends, LOL, lots of love. That's not what LOL means. That's what my son told me it meant. LOL, lots of love. What else, what else would it mean? Lots of loot. Lord have mercy. Well, happy Mother's Day to you moms out there. I'm here to tell you I love Mother's Day because I love my mama. And every Mother's Day, I can always think back to my mother when she was wearing white flower, red flower, and explaining what it meant and why, and about grandma, and all those things. And so it is a very special time of the year. I want to say this to the ladies. You know, women put up with a lot in this old world, especially in America. Well, really probably worse than a lot of other countries, to tell you the truth. But nevertheless, you really do. You put up with a lot. And a lot of men just think that a woman is kind of like half a man or something. There's a lot of truth when a woman says that she can do about twice what any man can do. I got real tickled when Joel Osteen uh, left his job up there and he got a woman to go up there and do it and she took over several others' jobs and they didn't need them anymore. He said, well, what point does that make? He said, well, it just shows you that one woman can do a few other men's job. So anyway, they just do a tremendous job and they're great at being moms and those of us that about drove our moms crazy, they deserve a lot of love. Can I get an amen? So today, I want to honor the Lord and I want to honor our mothers, and I just want you to know that in God there is no gender. He is. Can I get an amen? He just is. And we're created in his likeness and his image, and he made the man in the image and likeness of him, and then he took the rib, the woman, and that's where she came from. She came right out of that man. Hallelujah. And now is the beginning of a relationship, a family. We all understand that and we know where it goes. But I want you to look at Proverbs 31. I know you probably knew I was going to go there. But I'm not going to verse 10. I'm going to verse, I'm going to go to verse 1. And so in Proverbs 31, this could be a little controversial if you go study and look at it. I remember in school they talked about they're not sure if this is uh, Solomon or if it is another prince from another nation, maybe Israel, uh, and his mother taught him these things. And, they get, and I'm thinking to myself, why are you splitting hairs? Listen, this is the teaching, and this is the word of the Lord. Why don't you get into that? Because you can look at it either way you want. Personally, from what I study, what I see is this is Solomon, and he wants you to know what his mama taught him. Because your mama's teachings are so powerful. Now, do you believe that Solomon was a pretty sharp little fella? Do you think he was a good boy? Was he rich? Was he wise? Did he have any wisdom? What does the word say about him? It says they're no wiser than Solomon until Jesus came. Amen? No wiser. But who taught him? His mama. I'm going to tell you something. Woman's mighty powerful. Well, these are the words of King Lemuel, which that's a, how would I put it? That's a nickname for the name Solomon. That's what it is. And so these are the words of Solomon. The prophecy that his mother taught him. If he was here, he'd say, that's my mama. This is what his mother taught him. And she says, what my son? And what the son of my womb? And what the son of my vows? See, you already committed before you grew up. Give not your strength unto women. 
nor your ways to that which destroyeth kings. Of course, obviously, he's talking about sex and things of this nature in those ways in the King James here. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. Is it not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink? It says, least they drink and forget the law, pervert the judgment, and any of the afflicted. Now, talking to him about drinking. Sex, alcohol. Now, give some strong drink unto him that's all ready to perish and give wine to those that are of heavy hearts. Let him drink. Let him forget the poverty and remember his misery no more. He's letting him know the priorities of where you put. Back in that day, you have to understand, alcohol wasn't just for partying. They used it for medicine too. Amen. He says, open your mouth for the dumb. Boy, this is powerful. You know something? This is mama talking. See the difference? Open your mouth for those that can't speak for themselves. Already his mother is teaching him. Those that can't do a thing for themselves, you step up. And she says, dumb in the case of all such as are appointed to destruction. Because people like that, they're appointed to destruction if somebody doesn't stand in the gap. Open your mouth. Judge righteously. Plead the cause of poor and needy. Mama said, open your mouth and be wise. Judge righteous. Don't mess with women and don't be getting drunk. Mama's talking to you. Everybody ever had mama tell you something? Huh? What was that song? Mama told me not to come. Mama's in your life all the time. Can I get an amen? I know Every blue moon, somebody has a bummer mama. And I hate that. I'm sorry about that. I, I am. I have a very, very best friend. He's in heaven now. Couldn't stand his mother. She beat him so much. She cussed him so much. She was so rude. She would lock him up in dark closets and in basements for days and just all kinds of mean, mean, mean. He thought she was a witch. And when she died, they were so happy. The whole family was happy. They rejoiced. And I look at that and I go, wow. Wow. And hey, what, what happened? What, what helped him? And lo and behold, the Spirit of God moved in his life and began to be the mother and the father he never had and began to show up and show out. Then when he got married and had kids, had a lot of wisdom coming on, and the destruction of his childhood was not a destruction for his son. Hello. The wisdom and instruction from God's Word delivered him, and now his son's doing good. And then he says, so open your mouth, judge righteously, plead the cause for the poor and the needy who can find a virtuous woman. Now, who can find a virtuous woman? Now, what's she doing? She's now I've talked to you about some drinking, about messing with other women, and I've talked to you about standing up for others that can't help themselves and about helping poor and needy people. But now, boy, you need to be looking for a virtuous woman. You don't go out there and find one of the mothers we just talked about. Let's talk about this virtuous woman. Now, Kelly Varner, give him some credit here, has one of the most phenomenal revelations about Proverbs 31, especially from this point here on, and who this woman is in the Bible. And in the Bible, this woman is the church. So actually, it's all of us. But we can't help but stop and look around and have our mothers and our grandmothers and see a lot of these truths and traits in them. You know why? They were put in them out of the Bible. Their moms and dads put it in them. Can I get an amen out there? Who's going to find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies. My goodness, how expensive is a woman. She's worth every bit of it. I like what Clarice says. She said, my husband, his whole dream his whole vision in life was to, to make all the money he could make. She said, and mine was to spend it. And I thought, it's amazing, you know, how they think a lot like Kathy and I. Amen? I want to make all I can make, and she wants to spend it. Anyway, happy Mother's Day. So, so the heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her. Man, when a man's got a good woman, he trusts in her. I got a good woman. I read this stuff. I think of my wife. There's nobody can make me any more angry than my wife. Nobody. Nobody. You couldn't even make me as angry as she could. But there's nobody on the planet 
that I love more than I love that woman. I even told her one time she got real bad off. I said, we might disagree. We might have an argument. But I love you. I don't even care if we disagree. I want you. You know, y'all think I've lost my mind. I'm about ready to put the microphone down, go home and play with the grandbaby's grandma. I'm telling you now, I love my wife. Amen. The heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil and she'll do him good and not evil. How long is she going to do this? All the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax. She works willingly with her hands. He didn't come in and say, oh, you better get this. She works willingly with her hands. She's like the merchant ships, and she brings her food from afar. And she rises also while it's yet night, and she gives meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considers a field. Every time I read that, I want to go over to Mark 4. And she considers a field and buys it. And with the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. This is the woman. This is a, whoa. And she girds her loins with strength and strengthens her arms. Whew. Are you hearing me? She perceiveth that her merchandise, that it's good. Her candle goeth not out by night. It burns all night long. She lays her hands to the spindle. Her hands hold a distaff. She stretches out her hand to the poor. Why? She's been teaching her son what to do. Yeah, and he's watching. Searches forth her hands to the needy. And she's not afraid of snow for her household or for her household or clothed with scarlet. Let me, just let me finish reading a little bit. And she makes herself coverings of tapestry, clothing in silk, and purple, as for royalty. Her husband is known in the gates. Isn't that something? I'm known as Kathy's husband. Hallelujah. Her husband is known in the gates. Mm -mm -mm. When he sits among the elders of the land. She makes fine linen. She sells it. Delivers girdle to the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing. She, she rejoice in time to come, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth, words, she opens her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looks well to the ways of her household, and she eats not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and they call her blessed. I know my kids do. My wife's blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. I sure do. Many daughters have done virtuous, but thou exceedest them all. Favor's deceitful and beauty's vain, but a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Now, I know that it sounds like, this makes it sound like a woman does all the teaching. She does everything. It, did, it does, it looks like that. It says it almost like she just did everything. And I can't deny, my mother was the greatest influence of my life. She's the first woman in my life. Your mother is your first woman, just thought I'd tell you that. And she always talked to me about other people, how you treat them. She's the one that taught me how you always walk a girl on the inside. I, to this day, when I go down the street and see a man or woman walking, and I see a woman walking on the outside edge, and he's on the inside, I, you know, just forgive me. It's very judge, judgmental, but I want to look at him and think he's a jerk. But I'm actually thinking, after I think that, he probably doesn't know. I mean, you just don't know. And so you just walk down the road on either side, it doesn't matter to you. But if you were raised to understand something, it matters to you. And so when I do anything with my wife, I like her on the protected side. I open the door. My mama taught me open doors, move chairs. Yes, ma'am. My mama taught me. I don't know how well she taught me, but she taught me. And I remember the strength of my mother. I'm going to tell you something. The strength of a woman is phenomenal. 
they can endure and bear more than most men. Sure, most men can reach down, pick up two or three hundred pounds and throw it up or something. And a woman barely push it. They're still stronger than most men, but, but not in that sense. It's not about a physical strength. Can I get an amen? As a matter of fact, in Proverbs 4.4, 4, let's move over there and let's get into something here because even though it's Mother's Day, I want to take some of all of that junk that was just put on what you're supposed to do all your life with these kids and let's give some of it to your husband. Is that all right? Y'all not mad? Okay, husbands are getting mad. All right. So in four, let's go to 4.3. Let me get over here. I know it's over here somewhere. Okay. Well, I just go to one. Listen to what he's just simply saying. He says, hear your instructions of a father. Attend to the no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake you not my law. Watch this. For I was my father's son. Tender and only be loved in the sight of my mother. In verse 4, it said, He taught me what? I, it says, He taught me. What does also mean? Somebody else is teaching him. Who's teaching him? His mother. And then he goes on to say here in 4. Y'all looking at me like I've lost my mind. Maybe I have. I need to. I'm here to tell you that right now. But, but God is so cool. And he says, I was in my, he said, for I was my father's son, tender, only beloved in the sight of my mother. And he taught me also, watch. And he said to me, let your heart retain words. Wow. Words. And keep my commandments, and live. All right, now she's teaching him discretion, things about women, uh, how to treat people. She's teaching him all of that. He comes in and says, now my dad teaches me also, and he told me to keep my eyes on this and to watch this, but look what his dad starts reckoning to. His dad says, get wisdom. He said, get understanding. And forget it not. Don't you forget it. And do not decline from the words of my mouth. Oh, we're going to have a good time. Now watch this. I know it's Mother's Day and I might not be 100% on mother. I start off 100% on mom. I'm going to end up on mom and daddy. Is that okay? Because even on Mother's Day, daddy needs to stand up and say, thank you, mama. Amen. Now watch this. He says, let me go back to verse 5. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Now watch this. He starts from here on referring to wisdom as the mother or the woman. Are you all right? He says, forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wow. Men, the reason we need to wake up and look and say, wait a minute, God refers to wisdom as a woman, it's because God created a virtuous woman, and he knows how it flows. And like it or not, yes, sir, he is referring wisdom to a woman. And he says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, Get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. Watch this. Exalt her wisdom. She shall promote you. Wisdom. The ability to use knowledge, by the way. The ability to use knowledge will promote you. It's in the form of your mother. It's in the form of a woman. It is the power of it. Listen. She shall bring you to honor when you do embrace her. She she will give to your head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to you. It's funny. I almost feel like Jesus the first time he went to the temple and opened up the loop. I'm not even teaching. I'm just reading the scripture. And I can sense the anointing. There's an anointing here right now. There's something happening. Some eyes are being opened. There's some families being strengthened. 
There's some good healings going on. You watch what God's getting ready to do in our lives. And she shall give to thy hand an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, where does faith come from? Hearing. Hear, O my son, receive my sayings. Hearing, speaking, hear my sayings. And the years of your life shall be many. How many of you like many? I don't think 65 is too many. <laughs> That's my point. All right, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I led you in right paths. And when you go, your steps shall not be straightened. And when you runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not to the path of the wicked. And go not to the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For there sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and they drink the wine of violence, but the path of the just is like a shining light and it shines more and more unto a perfect day or until the days mature in your life. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not what they stumble. And every time you hear the word, my son, what does it mean? Y'all know it well. Builder of the family name. And then he says, even doesn't matter if the woman or the man says it, my son. Builder of the family name. Now watch. Attend to my words. It's amazing how his mother started off teaching him what to watch out for. And she even taught him about words. Women. Drinking. Wrong lifestyle. Not respecting people that need to be respected. How to help the unfortunate. She's really done a great job. He said, you know, my dad taught me also. And he goes on, but my dad taught me. What my dad taught me about wisdom, he always referred it to a woman or like my mama. I'm telling you, women are so, so, so over or underlooked. It's unbelievable. And Satan likes to get out and make, just play with that thing. He plays with it all the time. And in the kingdom of God, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Paul said there's not a male, there's not a female. There's not a Jew, there's not a Greek, there's not a bond, there's not a free. If you're in Christ Jesus, we're all one. So there's, there's not some man and a woman sitting on each man here, woman here, and he's greater because he's man and she, she's lesser. There's no way. It's the same God in him to send him, to send me, to send her. And when God starts moving, he's not going, hmm, I want to move through somebody with a lot of makeup, long hair, gender, and lipstick. God starts moving through whom he decides to move through to meet the need he decided to meet to do what he decided to do. Can I get an amen? And that's how the Spirit of God moves in our lives. It's not gender. I think gender is one of the, one of the biggest eruptions the enemy likes to use. He likes to use it in your home. He likes to use it in your church. Men like, women, won't you take your rightful place? If your wife took her rightful place, you'd probably be so saved you couldn't stand it because she'd be interceding to get you born again. And once you got born again and your eyes was open, you'd turn into a nice man, caress her, love her, give her some money, be sweet, not let nobody hurt her, pray for her when she's hurting, minister to her, let her know there ain't nobody in the world more important than her. I do the best I can for my wife, even the silliest little things. I make sure she don't even have to make coffee. I just want when she wakes up, it's just there. I just love that. I know all you men, oh, God, don't have me get up and make coffee for my wife. I don't drink coffee. Well, find out how she likes it and make it for her. It'll tickle her. You guys, you need to be sweet. Brush your teeth, floss, be sweet, be nice, clean up a little bit. She deserves it. You sit back in that dirty T-shirt smoking that cigar going, I bet she'll leave me someday for another fella. Why would she leave you? Hello. Y'all getting funny now. 
All right, let's get back in the word. My son, builder of the family name, attend to my words. Would you pay attention to my words? Incline your ear to what I'm talking about. These words, get it in your head. And don't let them depart out of your eyes. Keep that Bible in front of you. Keep it in the midst of your heart. What's this? For their life. To those that find them, you're not going to find them if you're not looking. And if you're not reading, you're not looking. You, or at least hearing, you got to read and hear, or you're not going to get it. For they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. That word health means healing. The words of God are healing to my flesh. They're healing to my flesh. Every time since Kathy and I have been born again, when we have a physical problem, something happens, we take this word, buddy, and I mean we get on with it. And when things get tough, we actually implement it even more so. If it gets tough, we throw more on it. There's times where, you know, there's nothing but just music, worship music going on in my home 24-7. I mean, there's times that's just the way it is. It seems like that's the way it needs to be. And I just keep, you can create the atmosphere God gave you. You literally have the ability to change the atmosphere in every room, in every building that you walk into. When you walk out of this room and you walk into where you're going all week long, you are an atmosphere changer. You change the atmosphere. You bring the light, the electricity, the hunger of God, the presence of God. The people looking around knowing there's something different. This is good. Hey, I, I don't know what they got, but I want that. I mean, that's really pretty cool when somebody says that about you. I don't know what you got, but I want it. And you can tell them, well, what, what if it's a, I might have a cow. Well, I just give me a holy cow. I like the way you're living. But you know, it's true. When people are moved by the Holy Spirit, other people want what they have. The anointing is magnetic. It just draws. It has the power to look in the scriptures as you read it, how the multitudes follow him. He had to run up into mountains and hide in rocks so he could pray by himself. I don't know any preachers in Rock Hill that have to go hide from the people. I don't. Hello. Y'all looking at me real funny. Well, you don't need it. All right, let's get on. So, he says, their health to your flesh. Keep your heart. Now, what's your heart? Keep your heart. Out of it are the issues of life, the heart. The very center part of your being, made in the image and likeness of God. The heart, the soul, and the flesh. And that your heart and your soul are creating an exact image and likeness of God. And your body is a mold shape of God. But it's a glove. It's made out of the dirt. It's made out of the dirt. That's why it loves everything that's connected to dirt. It has lust of the flesh. Anything of the earth, your flesh loves it. Anything. Even sinful, wrongful things. It comes from the earth. Your spirit comes straight from heaven. Paul said, with my flesh I serve sin. But with my spirit I serve the law of God. And we have to understand that our spirit is in words and that our spirit is in his nature and in his image and that our flesh really is the glove. Now, whose hand is in your glove? And if it's the word of the Lord, then you have the hand of God. Then the hand of the Lord is moving. If it's the word of the enemy, uh, we got some real serious problems here. But I got to start winding down here. So he says... Keep them in your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And he said, put away from you a forward mouth, a forward mouth, perverse talking, cursing, things that are unnecessary, things that are negative. Put it away. Stop it. I, 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 I can't do that. Yes, you can. You become who you hang with. Most of you that cuss, you hang with people that cuss. Matter of fact, some of the people you hang around that cuss, they learn to cuss from you. When you come in and find, they find out your tongue got tamed by the Holy Ghost, and you can help them without guilt and condemnation, they'll, they'll start coming around and doing it. You know what I learned at Duke Power? When I got born again and all the guys cussed like crazy out there, the longer I was around them, the less they cursed. I even had people, when they did curse, apologize. That's funny. Somebody doing something, just say a GD. Oh, I'm sorry, man, I didn't see you standing there. And I'd be thinking, me standing here. If I'm not here, you can GD. But if I'm here, you can't. Something wrong with this picture. 
And so I found this real cute little sweet way to let everybody know, hey, listen, I wasn't paying any attention. God's always listening. Don't worry about me. <laughs> oh, well, I'll go over that and let you know. But anyway, I didn't mean it as guilt and condemnation. I meant it as I really ain't on you. You are to be more concerned about what God's hearing you say. Don't worry about what I heard you say because I'm just like you. Hello. You bash my thumb, I might say, oh, Jesus, I might not. Okay, get mad at me. So put away your forward mouth. <laughs> In verse 25, let, I love this, let thine eyes look right on. Not to the left, but right on. And let your eyelids look straight before you. Don't look left and right, go straight on. Ponder the path of your feet. Think about where you're going. And let all your ways be established. You're talking about before you move. Hello. Count your eggs before they hatch. Mm -hmm. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove your foot from evil. How do I do that? Well, I'm getting in the car, getting ready to go someplace I ain't supposed to be. But it's fun down there. Well, you need to remove your foot from it, even if it is fun. Because that's exactly what sin is it's good and evil and sin is so attractive that it pulls people out and then it's deceptive it's a boat that won't float it just carries you out in titanics you get out there in that icy water hit an iceberg it's just over sin's a deception the bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge and on this mother's day there's no doubt about it every woman that has a child that's alive today, that cares for that baby, is a person that has given their life, their time, their money, their youth, their energy, wiping that baby, cleaning that baby. I'm telling you, taking care of her husbands too. A mother is an amazing, amazing woman because they take care of the whole family. Say, yeah, but the man's a provider and brings the bread. I told my wife, sometimes I have to do what she does. I said, every man ought to have to do what a woman does for one month, and every woman ought to do what a man. You would have the greatest understanding about each other, and you would tell each other, go do what you do, you do it well. And to understand to compliment one another. You know, fellas, when you come home, and you're tired and burnt, and you want a good old supper, and you've got one of those ladies that doesn't have a job, to, you think she doesn't work, she stays at home and takes care of the kids, and the baby, you know, she's just chilling. She's got it made. Listen, I got just one kid, one, 16 months old, one. And I'm going to tell you, at 5 o'clock at the end of the day, that's me and that's not mama. Hello. A woman loves it when a man steps in and does exactly what we just read. My father taught me also. And so on Mother's Day, I want to encourage you men to support the moms. Get behind them and teach the children also. And not put it all on mama. She's great and she's awesome. You're known in the, in the gates of the city because of her. But you know something? She needs you and she loves you. And you have wisdom and you have knowledge and you have what she needs also to raise these kids right and to send them out into the world to minister Christ and life and peace to a hurting and a dying people. Because Proverbs 31 is nothing but the medicine to a hurting and dying world. We are the mother. We are the woman of the church, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this world that is out there is a whole lot of illegitimate children in the spirit realm. And they're hungry to have a mama and a daddy to be born again to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, to be saved from damnation, and to have eternal life and peace through Jesus Christ. And it only comes from him, through him, and by him. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you today as we just stop and realize the reality of a woman. Even Jesus himself spoke of his own mother and said, this woman shall be honored above all women forever. And so as silly as it might look to religious people, 
on this day of Mother's Day, I say to the mother of the Son of God, we honor you according to Scripture and the words of Jesus' own mouth. We love you, we honor you. Jesus didn't tell us to worship you. He told us to honor you. We worship the Lord and we honor those he puts in our lives. What that woman must have went through as a young teenage woman. I thank you, Father. Our mothers that bore so much pain in bringing us into this world. The tears and the cries. Your word says they forget about all of that pain because of the joy of that child. Oh, Father, us men will never understand that one. To know the woman could suffer so bad and in just a moment forget about it because she's holding that baby up against her breast. And Heavenly Father, I just thank you today for touching every person that's having difficulties in their relationships. Some of you, your moms just went to heaven. Day's hard for you. But in another way, it's a good day because you get to think about her and you know God's got his hands on her. He's received her and he's waiting. He didn't take her from you. He received him. Received her just for you. There's a reservation in heaven, glory be to God. And it's reserved by the power of the blood of the Lamb. To all who call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And now, Father, I thank you for gracing the women. We thank you for these women at the shield. These are some great women. The way they raise their children. I see their sons and their daughters. And Father, I... I know from 40 years of pastoring and talking to pastors, <laughs> you know how people love you by their children. And the people's children here sure do love Kathy and I so much. They hug us and grab our legs and pull on our clothes. I don't even know most of them's names. And they act like they're going home with us. I just want to thank you for a church full of love. Amen. A church where children can come and make noise and not scare everybody. We love them. We gooch them, tickle them. And Dale Stanley quit giving them so much candy. Oh, Father, I thank you for the love that's in this house for children. This is a unique church. And I thank you, Father God, that we're not going to stay like we are. You're not going to leave us like this. We're going to grow and explode. Hallelujah. And the mothers and the fathers are going to teach the sons and the daughters the ways of the Lord. And when they're old, they're not going to depart from it. And we're going to decree the word of the Lord. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And we bless our moms in Jesus' name. All right, ushers, we got a, we got a wonderful, sweet little gift for moms. Something to make you a little sweeter. That's a hint. So let's all stand up. Let me get up with you. And as moms, you're going out the door. We got a gift for you at the door. We want you to get that gift and just enjoy it. And just remember, you deserve a whole lot more than that. But it's something we wanted to bless you with today. And Deborah Davis is a lady that comes here on Sunday mornings, goes to another church. She works at White Oak. She's a supervisor there. My brother was in a nursing home at White Oak for a couple of years. And she comes here sometimes in first services. She baked all of this just for the mothers, and it's from her as a gift to you for us. And I'm very grateful for Deborah Davis, and may God bless her, and may God bless you moms, and thank you for being mamas, because we wouldn't be here without you. And everybody said, amen and amen. God bless you. Go do the word, and God thank you for mama.